Okay, in this video we're going to consider the relationship between fractions and decimals. In particular, we're going to look at tenths, hundreds and thousands. Now, ten, uh, tenths, hundreds and thousands should have been something that you've come across before. Okay, so we're just going to remind ourselves and then think about how they're related. So, one tenth equals 0 0.1. Okay, remember a fraction is less than a whole or part of a whole. Okay, in this instance we need 10 to make a whole okay so we've only got one tenth here okay we haven't got any ones we'd have to have 10 of these in order to make one whole okay so these columns we can remember as being fractions of amounts okay so we would need 10 tenths to make a whole 100 hundredths to make a whole or a thousand thousandths to make a whole okay so if 0 0.1 is 1 tenth, 2 tenths equals what? Well, yeah, double the amount. So 2 tenths, we would have 2 in the tenths column and our placeholder in the ones column or the units column. Okay, and that would be the same for 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 and so on. 0 0.5 should be one that you're familiar with. Because if I use my equivalent fractions, 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. Okay, so 0 0.5 is a really common one we come across in maths. So that's tenths. What about hundredths then? Well, hundredths, okay, are 10 times smaller. So we've moved a column. Okay, so in this instance, 1 hundredth equals 0 0.01. Okay, so my one this time is in my hundreds column, and I need placeholders in the columns that come before it. Okay, so I've got 0 0.01, and again, we'd have 0 0.02, and so on, 0 0.07. Okay, but look at this number here in blue, 14 hundredths. Mm, what's different about that one? Well, I've got a problem, because I can't put 14 in the hundredth column, I can't have two digits in the same column, okay? So what do I do, okay? Well, just like we would with anything else, okay? When we're dealing with uh, whole numbers rather than decimals, I do exactly what I normally do, okay? So I would keep the four in my hundredths column and my 10, okay? I'm passing on, okay? I'm moving into the next column. So this becomes 0 0.1. One four, okay, and it might help you to remember that if we think of this number here, what we're actually saying is that we've got ten one hundredths plus four one hundredths, okay. And if I do four plus ten, that would equal fourteen, okay. So the number, the last digit falls into is the column we class it out. So in this case, the four ended in the hundreds column. Okay, so that's how we knew our fraction would be a hundred. Okay, and that would work for other numbers as well. So for example, if we said, hmm, what would 38 hundreds look like? Okay, and again, exactly the same. We can't have two digits in the same column, so we would keep the eight and pass on the three, and then we've still got a placeholder, 0.38 or 38 hundredths. Okay, let's look at thousandths. So a thousandths, 10 times smaller again. Okay, so this time we've got 0.01. Oh, Anybody spotting my mistake? I said one thousandth is equivalent to 0 0.01, okay? Because I need my one to be in my thousandths column, okay? See, everyone makes mistakes. So, 0 0.01, okay? And then that would be exactly the same for 0 0.002, 0 0.008, and so on, okay? But have a look at my blue number again. This time it says 2700, uh, 27,000, sorry. Try again. 
So just like we did with the hundreds, we can't have two digits in that column. Doesn't look right, doesn't work. Okay, so we have to keep the smaller numbers. So keep the seven, because I've got seven thousandths. And my twenty thousandths, I'm going to pass on into my next column, into my hundreds column. So this time I've got 0 0.027, okay? And again, you could think of that as 20 thousandths plus seven thousandths, okay? Because that's how we've partitioned it into our columns. What about if I did a different number then? How about if we did uh, 49 one thousandths? How would we do that one? Well, exactly the same. Keep my nine. And then the four ends up in the hundreds column. And then I need placeholders for the rest. What about if I had a three digit number then? So how about if I had... 272 one thousandths. What do you think is going to happen with that? Yeah, you've got it. So exactly the same. The pattern continues. So the two will go in the thousandths column because that's the, num the number I'm looking at here. Then we pass on the seven, pass on the two, and then I keep my placeholder 0 0.272. Okay. So we've looked at tenths, we've looked at hundreds, and we've looked at thousandths. Now it might be that you want to rewind the video and have another look at that before moving on and having a go yourself. Okay, but when you're ready, here's a few questions. So here's all the decimals. Can you turn them into fractions? Pause the video now and give that a go. Right, how did you get on? Hopefully this is starting to make sense to you. So the first one, 0.7. Okay, I've got a seven in the tenths column. So that's nice and straightforward. I've got seven tenths. Next one, 0 0.09. Again, I've got a nine in the hundreds column. So I end up with nine hundredths. Okay, next one, 0 0.36. Now this time, I've got a number in the tenths and the hundredths column, but because I've got a number in the hundredths number, in the hundredths column, sorry, I know exactly what the denominator is going to be for my fraction. It's going to be a hundred, and this time I've got thirty-six hundredths. Now it might be that you're starting to link this to your knowledge of equivalent fractions, and you might think, "Oh, I can make that smaller by dividing it to find an equivalent fraction." So you might have halved it for example half divided by two is 50 36 divided by two well half of 30 is 15 half of six is three so that would be 18 fiftieths and again you might have noticed that you can divide that again by two halve it and that's 25 half 18 that's nine twenty fifths okay 0 0.101 Okay, so let's try that one. So because this time I've got tenths, hundreds and thousandths, my denominator is going to be thousandths and I've got 101 of them. Okay, 101 thousandths. How did you get on? Hopefully this is all coming together. So try these ones then. These ones were converting decimals into fractions. Can you do it the other way around? Can you convert your fractions into decimals. Pause the video again and give that a go. Hopefully you've given that a good go. So let's have a look at the answers. So three tenths. Okay, I've got three in the tenths column. Nice and simple, 0 0.3. Okay, next one. I'm going to go down. 65 one hundredths. Okay, 65 hundredths. So I've got Less than a whole, so I've got zero, zero point six five. Okay, so my five, oops, five is in my hundredth column, six in my tenth column because it's too big to fit in my hundreds. Okay, seven hundred and forty two thousandths. 
So again, less than one, so it's zero, 0 0.742. And the final one, 91 thousandths. So be careful with this one. 0 0.091, okay? Because I've got to remember that this is 91 thousandths, so my one has to go into my thousandths column. The nine is goes into the next column, so it goes into the hundreds. But there's nothing in my tenths column, so I need that extra zero. Okay. Right. Extra challenge then, depending on how confident you're feeling. Have a look at these. Pause the video and see if you can do these ones. So how did you get on with these challenges then? You might have noticed that some of the fractions in particular were either improper, they were top heavy, or mixed numbers, and that might have just fooled you a little bit. But let's have a look, hopefully not. So 13 tenths. So we've got to think, oh, I've got more than a whole there, because I've got more than 10. So what I've actually got is one and three tenths. That means I've got more than one. I've got 1.3, one because I've got one whole and three tenths. Let's have a go, 0.25. So 0.25, I've got to turn it into a fraction. So this number is in the hundreds column. So that means my denominator is 100, and I've got 25 of them, 25 hundredths. Okay, 25 and 100 are related. 25 does go exactly into 100. Okay, it is one of the ones that we should know. Okay, so 125 goes into 25, and then 425 goes into 100. So that's one quarter. It's a really important one for us to remember. 0.125. So because the final digit is in the thousands column, that's going to be my denominator. So I've got 125 thousandths. Again, I can link it to 25. I know that there's four 25s in 100 plus one extra, that's five. And then there would be four in 100 and 1,000 is 10 times bigger, that's 40. And I can simplify that because I know that one, five and eight fives goes into 40. So that's one eighth. So 0 0.125 is equivalent to one eighth, another one for us to remember. Final one then, we've got a mixed number fraction, two holes. So instead of a zero in my ones column, I've got two, 2.26. Well done if you got all those. They were a bit trickier. Hopefully they didn't fool you. Keep having a go. Keep trying out other ones.